March 11, 2011, was a day like no other for northeastern Japan. For on that day, a devastating earthquake and tsunami left tens of thousands dead and displaced. One of those killed on that fateful day was Randolph-Macon College's own Taylor Anderson, a proud member of the RMC class of 2008, who following her graduation had been for nearly three years living her dream of teaching English in Japan. Taylor's tragic death occurred on that awful afternoon. After the earthquake struck, she made sure that all the young students for whom she was responsible had made it safely into the arms of their parents and families. It was then, and only then, that she began pedaling her bicycle home, unknowingly into what turned out to be the face of the deadly tsunami. It was just a few weeks before she was to have completed her service there and returned home to the U.S. And now, 10 years later, Taylor's bravery and heroism are still well remembered in Japan. And we honor her on our own campus with a beautiful seating area just outside our McGraw-Page Library. The bench and chairs are fittingly situated between a Japanese cherry tree and an American dogwood, representing the bridge that Taylor so wanted to build between her home country and her adopted one. In the decades since the tragic events of that March 11th, Randolph-Macon College has become inextricably linked with Japan. While Professor Todd Munson had long taught a January term travel course in Japan, in fact a course that Taylor herself took when she was a student here, we have significantly expanded our travel courses to Japan in the last decade. Multiple foundation grants and generous individual gifts made to RMC and Taylor's memory have enabled us to send dozens of Randolph-Macon College faculty and nearly 200 RMC students to Japan for study or research and more bridge building. Indeed, my wife Cheryl and I were privileged to join Drs. Lauren Bell and Jim Doring's two January term travel courses in 2017, and I can attest personally that the connections that have been forged in Japan over these many years have enriched not only the individuals who travel there and the many people we met, but also our community here as a whole. And the ensuing relationships contributed significantly to the creation of our popular minor in Japanese studies and to the establishment of new and reinvigorated institutional partnerships with four universities in Japan. Also since 2012, we have been privileged to host the Virginia Governor's Japanese Language Academy on our campus. And we likewise greatly admire Taylor's parents, Andy and Jean Anderson, who have done so much personally to ensure their daughter's wonderful legacy of Japanese-American bridge building is being sustained. You see, out of that terrible tragedy of March 11, 2011, grew beautiful relationships that have developed from our own campus all the way across the Pacific to the Japanese Peninsula and back again. And now, in marking the anniversary of this tragedy, through art, film, and with the ringing of our carillon here on campus, we honor Taylor and the powerful legacy she left. And we remember and honor all the lives lost on that terrible day. And I hope together we will continue to celebrate in the years ahead the unshakable friendships that have developed between Randolph-Macon College and the people of Japan all encouraged by the remarkable life of Taylor Anderson. Konnichiwa. Thank you for including us as part of this video commemoration. On March 11, 2011, little did we know this day would change the rest of our lives. 
The last 10 years since the great East Japan earthquake and tsunami, we've had the privilege to deepen our ties with the Randolph-Macon community with the help of programs conceived by Randolph-Macon, the Taylor Anderson Memorial Fund, the Japan Foundation, and the U.S. Japan Council Tomodachi Program. We are so grateful to President Bob Lindgren, Professor Lauren Bell, Director of International Education Mayumi Nakamura, and so many others who have contributed their time, effort, and love in honoring our daughter. These programs honor Taylor by providing the opportunity for students and faculty to learn about Japan, its people, and its culture, just as we think she would have wanted. Taylor's first trip to Japan was for the J-Term, History of Tokyo, course in 2006. She then studied the works of Japanese author Haruki Murakami as a surf fellow in the summer of 2006. Those were some of the opportunities that helped her see she wanted to live, work in, and explore Japan when she graduated in 2008. That sense of how she wanted to start life after college was well supported academically, intellectually, and socially at Randolph-Macon College. She left Randolph-Macon focused on a new life, nurtured by her four years as an energetic, loving, curious, independent, determined, resilient, and fun yet loving young lady. Randolph-Macon's dedication to Japanese exchange and academic programs, especially in Ashinamaki, where Taylor taught, continued to help Taylor's second home recover while teaching us all valuable lessons about the resiliency of the human spirit. The bench area outside the library with a dogwood and cherry tree, the student exchanges, the library corner, and the hosting of the Virginia Governor's Japanese Language Academy help us remember and honor that spirit that Taylor left with us. We thank Randolph-Macon College for knowing Taylor so well and carrying her spirit forward as we try to do every day. It is an honor to have you as a partner in this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. And agarakato gazaimazu. For all of us in America who love Japan and who had friends and family there, we were very, very concerned and we wondered what can we do to help when we're sitting here safely in America, thousands of miles away. Here in Washington, we were less than a month away from the National Cherry Blossom Festival, which celebrates Japan's gift of the cherry blossom trees to the United States. So we wondered, how can we celebrate when Japan is going through such a terrible time? But yet, at that very moment, the beautiful cherry blossoms were blooming in Washington. And to me, it was a symbol that just like the cherry blossoms, Japan would be back. So one evening, very cold, very windy, all of us in Washington who love Japan gathered at the base of the Washington Monument, which stands so very tall and strong in the center of our city. And we pledged that we also would stand with Japan. We were happy uh, to see President Obama uh, sent the USS Ronald Reagan, the aircraft carrier, and all the military assets uh, to go to Japan to provide support. Uh, it was wonderful to see our two countries working together so closely, side by side, as partners as Japan faced this great challenge. Closer to home, at the people-to-people -people level as well, there were so many examples across the country of people helping. Every morning, our own staff would go to the metro subway stations uh, in Washington to help raise funds for the Red Cross. It was around that time that we learned that Taylor Anderson had given her life in Japan, doing what she loved in a country that she loved. Now, one of our Japan America Society's proudest activities is the National Japan Bowl, which is a nationwide competition for high school students who are learning Japanese. That was something that Taylor always wanted to do, to formally study Japanese, but she couldn't until she went to Randolph-Macon. So that year we decided to dedicate our National Japan Bowl to Taylor because we thought she was like the students who were there from across the country. They were young people who loved Japan for whatever reason, its people, its culture, its anime, its manga, whatever. They all wanted to study Japanese and learn more about the country, just like Taylor and so many other students at Randolph-Macon. 
I'm happy to learn that your Japan programs have expanded so greatly over the past decade and that so many students and faculty members have been able to travel there too. It's a great tribute to your college and to Taylor's memory. And of course, behind all of this, there are Taylor's wonderful parents, Jean and Andy. I am honored to remember with you the tragic disaster which occurred 10 years ago in Tohoku, Japan. My name is Masashi Mizobuchi, spokesperson for the Embassy of Japan in Washington, D.C. March 11th this year marks the 10th year anniversary of the Great East Japan earthquake and the day we tragically lost Miss Taylor Anderson, a beloved teacher, friend, and daughter who embodied the best of the JET program and serves still today as a cultural bridge in the unshakable friendship between our countries. Taylor was a hero in the truest sense of the word. She saved so many lives during the disaster as she ushered her students to safety. In her memory, Randolph Macon College has worked to keep Taylor's dreams alive. Randolph Macon College has become a cross-cultural bridge by sending students, faculty, and staff to Japan and by welcoming visiting Japanese students and professors to the U.S. in turn. Among these delegations are visitors from the Walking U.S. Talk on Japan program and the Japanese National Governors Association in recent years. Additionally, Randolph Macon College hosts the Virginia Governors Japanese Language Academy which inspires new generations of young Virginians to learn about Japan. We are inspired to see Taylor's legacy reach so many lives through such programs and thank Randolph Macon College for their dedication to her memory. The Embassy of Japan welcomes continued efforts to keep Taylor's dream alive and would like to join you in remembering Taylor and all the lives lost on March 11th.